Shalom. Good morning, family of Israel. All praise and glory to the mighty Most High, our Creator, who's one God. I've got a special lesson for us today. Um, well, I hope it turns out to be something special. I'm going to be covering a lot of different topics. But the bottom line is we're bringing some truth, some serious truth. Today I want to talk about L. As in, <clears throat> for this lesson, let's say that L, well, because it pretty much is, is God. Okay? God is Elohim. So today what we're going to be focusing on is these two. L. L as in the Supreme, the Lord, which is uh, 30, 68 of the Strongs, Concordance. So the Lord is the self-existing eternal creator. And self has L in it. E-L in the word self. Because the man that was created in Genesis 1.27, when he's created him, created him, this man, him, is self. In the beginning, God created him, male and female, he created him, self. Now we have... El, Elohim, which means plural of Eloah, okay, Eloah is a deity, God, what are deity gods, exactly? Well, <clears throat> there are people that consider them uh, selves God, mankind, okay? Mankind is 666. The plural of gods are mankind, okay? Now, when you ask, when somebody calls you on the phone, what's the first thing that you say? Hello? Huh? And when you're walking contrary to the Lord, what are you doing? You're a rebel. Or you can also... Rebel. Imagine that. Rebel and rebel spelt the same way. Two different meanings. And also, this can be against the government. Okay? So, now, you have the Supreme God, L. Just as an ex this is just uh, an exercise. I don't call the Creator L. Okay, I don't call him Yahweh. I don't call him Yah, Yahweh. I don't call him Yahshua. Um, um, 
if there was any name at all that was put to Jesus, folks, you got to understand it was spelt. Iesos was the proper name for Jesus. Okay? There was no J. And the reason why we're having all these conflicts and stuff. Is because those in the providence of Israel. Couldn't. Uh, agree. On the proper vowels. Why do you suppose that is? Because. The spirit removed his name all right the only thing that the bible tells us and uh there are different uh versions many different versions and if you if you read through them all it does say in a couple of versions that i am the lord jehovah okay jehovah was uh spelt y H V H Yehovah, and then they added the vowels. Well, the tribes couldn't agree on the vowels for the name, so right away you're going to have disputes in the Creator's name. So what do I say? I say that the best thing to do is just call the Creator the self-existing Eternal One, because that's what He says that His name is. Now, also, you have. L, uh, which equals Elohim, which means uh, mankind, which equals angels. Okay, this is what mankind calls themselves. They call themselves angels. All right. And an angel is a priest. Okay. So we have a priest. A bishop. And a deacon. Okay. All three of these and many other ones, cleric, right? Clergy, um, pastor, okay, all have six letters in the spelling. All of them. Coincidence? Okay, well, when you add the sum of priests, it comes to 69. 6 plus 9 equals 15. And 1 plus 5 equals 6. So now priest has 6 letters, and when you break it down to a single digit, it has 6. Bishop adds to 87. 8 plus 7 is 15. And then again, 1 plus 5 is 6. Bishop adds up to 6, and it has 6 letters. Deacon adds up to 42, which equals 2 plus 4 equals 6. Okay? Also, what else? Temple. Church. Christ. All have six letters in the spelling. The number in the Strong's Concordance for Angel. Again, you have L in Angel. 32 is the number in the Strong's Concordance, which means Anglos. Anglo. 
hang the low means the implication used of a priest. So now we know that angels also have EL in them. Give me a second, folks. Come on. Wow. Okay. The seven angels of God. First one, you have Michael. You have Raphael. You have Gabriel. You have Uriel. You have Seriel. You have Regal. And Remio. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. These are the seven angels of God. Hmm. L. L. Huh. The seven angels of God. The war in heaven. These are the seven powerful angels. These angels are the ones that taught everybody war. Folks, these are the angels that fell from heaven. But yet, on this plane of existence, we're taught that these are good angels. All right? A war took place in heaven. And Michael was, Michael and them fought. <clears throat> what happened? Boy, I like these markers much better. I'll tell you that. Um, well, it starts in Revelations. Revelation. I keep doing that. They're not Revelations, folks. It's a Revelation. 12.4. All right. Which says... And with his tail, he swept one third of the stars from the host of heaven. From the host of heaven. And flung them. To the earth. Okay, Revelation 12.4. And with his tail he swept one third of the stars... From the host of heaven and flung them to the earth. What are the stars? They're Hollywood stars, folks. They're rock stars, folks. They're political stars, folks. They're generals. Who wears stars?
They're porn stars. All of these equal you star worshippers. There you go. All right. And there's many other stars too, man. What are all these? What is it? It's all idol worship. And what is all this? It's mankind. You got to understand mankind includes woman. You understand that? Everybody just wants to kind of discard women, man. And, and mankind means both man and woman. Okay? A woman is kind of a man. And mankind, uh, as I said earlier, when you add the sum of mankind, it comes to 66. Mankind was created on the sixth day in Genesis 1.25. All right, which says God created the beast of the field. Each according to their kind. Genesis 125 says, God created the beasts of the field, each according to their kind. <clears throat> this is the United Nations that was created, folks. This is big for you to understand. Okay, you're not going to have any Christian minister teaching you the truth about the United Nations being created in Genesis 1.25 because Satan has hid himself inside of the Bible and made himself uh, elevated again. Wow, I like this marker, man. Cake. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Have problems breathing. It's all that crack I fucking smoked all my life. Okay, um L as in elevated as in the elite as in the elected as in um, electric because Satan was thrown down like uh, lightning and lightning is electricity I don't know if I spelt that right Again, what is it? When we answer the phone, we always say hello, remember? What is it that's down below? Hell. Hell is below. L. Satan is hell, folks. Don't you get it? You can't put that together. Huh? This is uh, pretty basic stuff once you start with the scales removed off of your eyes. So clearly we can see that something wants to be elevated as the creator. Well, who, who is that? Right? Satan. What if I could prove to you within this 666 system. What's um, been plaguing this nation?
right? What do we got here? Again, we got six letters. Corona has six letters in the spelling. When you add it up, it comes to 66. Corona means 666. Okay? How many of you, uh, let's, let's do, let's do this. How many of you know who Bill Gates is? Okay, when you add the sum of Bill Gates' name, it comes to 87. 8 plus 7 equals 15, and 1 plus 5 equals 6. Bill Gates' name adds up to 87, and to a single digit, it comes to a 6. Okay? Corona, I might as well have kept that up there. 666. Bill Gates' name adds up to 666. Okay? If you uh, Google the patent for the Bill Gates vaccine, ah. or the Bill Gates microchip, That one will get you there. The patent number, folks, WO2020-060606. Okay? What did they call it? This is all biblical, folks. This has everything to do with revelations. Revelation Here's a call for wisdom. Let the one with insight calculate the number of the beast, for it's the number of a man, and his number is 666. Mankind created on the sixth day is 666. The spirit of our creator, the self-existing eternal one, created a beast system. He created a 666 system. Okay? That should blow you away. Also, when you multiply 13 times 18, it comes to 234. And when you add that number backwards, 432 to 234, it comes to 666. Coincidence? Huh. I don't know, huh? They say the curvature to the earth is 66.6 .6 feet of curvature. How do you get there? You go 10 miles times 10 miles because you have to square the footage because we're supposed to be on a ball, which equals an easy pleasy of 100. And then you got to multiply that times 8 inches because they say that the earth is curved 8 inches per mile squared which would give you 800 inches 
of curvature. Now, if we want to break this down and find out what 800 inches is, we got to divide that by 12 inches, which gives you 66.6 .6 feet of curvature to 10 miles. It gives you 6,666.66 feet of curvature to 100 miles. I got a question for you. I'd ask any of you, man, to go check it out, man. Go to your toolbar, man. Pause the video. Go to your toolbar and punch in railgun. What is a railgun? It is a, a an energy device that is capable of shooting uh, a projectile a hundred miles on a flat plane. And, and supposedly being able to hit the nit of the gnat of a nut on a freaking tree a hundred miles away. So the question that I got to ask you, man, is if this rail gun can shoot something that's over a hundred miles away, how do you shoot something that's supposed to have all this curvature? If you're here on this ship here and you're sailing and you got this little device, this gun... Okay, and your enemies uh, down. This is, you're up here. How are you gonna have a line of sight on your enemy? Huh? Okay, projectiles don't. You, projectiles don't go. Woo, okay, they don't have devices on it that they can steer their way, folks. If you're on a ship up here and this is your gun here and you're floating and you're shooting then you haven't got a line on this. You can't see it. So, yeah, go go, Google uh, Navy rail guns and look at it, and they'll tell you straight out, man. You can't shoot something 100 miles away because you have, what, 6,666? That's over a mile of curvature. You couldn't see a ship over 100 miles away. So tell me something, if you couldn't see a ship over 100 miles away, how come you can walk out on your beach and you can grab one of those PK-900s and you can zoom it in and zoom it all the way out to the sea lane and then leave it like that on hyperspace for the day and then you'll see sh ships sailing back and forth in the sea lane over 100 miles out at sea. If there was curvature, folks, you couldn't uh, see, see that curvature. Also, it says that uh, that the sun goes around the uh, or the sorry, excuse me, that the Earth goes around the sun at eighteen point five miles per second, which equals sixty six thousand six hundred miles per hour. All while flying through space at two million eight hundred forty three thousand. 666 miles per hour. Coincidence? Huh. The Earth tilted on its axis 23.4 degrees tilted on its axis tilted on its axis from a 90 degree angle from the Sun Angle equals 666, 66.66. When you add the sum again, I've told you, when you add the sum again of mankind, 13, 1, 14, 11, 9, 14, 4 equals 66. Mankind was created on the 6th day of creation okay what's the atomic number for six or the atomic number number for carbon equals six also there's six electrons six protons and six neutrons, which equals six, six, six. Again, the magic number, 
666. What does it all have to do with? Genesis 1, 26 and 27. God said, let us make mankind. God said, let us make mankind in our image. And likeness to rule over the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, the cattle of the land, and every thing that creeps upon the face of the earth. So then, so God created mankind in his own image. And in the image of God, he created him. Here you go. Male and female. Uh-oh. Let's see, 11, uh, 21, 24, 25, 35, 37, 42. Uh-oh. God created him male and female. Key word here, him, him. God created him. This is one man, folks. God created one man, a male and female. What Christian ministers ever told you that shit before, huh? You ain't never heard that. So God said, let us make mankind. Mankind's total sum comes to 66. Mankind was created on the sixth day. Let us create mankind in our image and likeness. So God created mankind in his image and likeness. And in the image of God, he created him one man, a male and female. He created him a transvestite. What? What did that boy just say? Yes, our creator created an energy force. It's made up of six electrons, six protons, and six neurons, or neutrons. All right? And what is this? What's this make up? This is the atomic atom. Atom, as in atom. As in the first man, Adam. As in firstborn over all creation. Who's firstborn over all creation? First Colossians one fifteen for the Son, who's the Son? Jesus Christ is the image. So God said. God said, let us make mankind in our image. Our image and likeness. <clears throat> this first man here was created in an image. 
for Christ Jesus is the image. 20 for you shall make for yourselves no graven image. Hold on, man. That's the answer. Did I just give you the answer to life right there? I think I pretty much did, man. Genesis 1.26 says that God said, let us make mankind in our image. Mankind was created in Genesis 1.25. Okay? In the image and in our likeness and in the image of God, he created him, one man. He created this one man, a male and a female. He created this energy force, this image Image means to shade. It means uh, a phantom. Okay? A phantom equals a ghost, which equals the spirit of the dead. Okay? Spirit of the dead. An image means to shade a phantom. It's an illusion. Okay? It's a... Uh, Representative. A representative figure. Especially an idol. This man that was created in an image on the sixth day of creation was created an idol. The self-existing eternal creator, which is one God, says that you are not to worship any idols. What are they putting right in front of you on television? American Idol. It's right in front of your face, man. You see, the problem is, is we're all worshiping one another. You're worshiping your kids, or you're worshiping your mother, or parents, or friends, or rock and roll stars. You're idolizing other people. You see, when you place yourself in these positions to be idolized, you will burn in hell for that. You've got to understand that the Creator created evil first. Boy, this thing's just lagging. So now you see what I go through. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 7, Bible Hub. The Lord says in 45, 7 of Isaiah... This is the self-existing eternal creator. I form the light. And 
and I create darkness. Okay. Okay, darkness, folks. The number for darkness is 2282, and that's in the Strong's Concordance. And the word for darkness is Chosek. Okay, this is how I learn, man. This is how I learn. This is what I look at. See, so now we know. Then when it says that God created the darkness, give me one second, I don't know where my parable went. I start getting all these windows open. Yeah. Give me one second, I gotta close this thing, it's, it's moving way too slow for me. Okay, Isaiah 45, Seven. I am the Lord. I form. I form the light. I created darkness. Darkness is what we're going over here. Darkness in this parable, folks, doesn't mean that he's talking about when it's nighttime outside. He's talking about dark hints, darkness, figuratively, misery, sorrow, destruction, death. That's what darkness means. I've been trying to tell you. In Revelations 12.4, that battle that I mentioned earlier in this lesson where the angel was thrown down is talking about in the beginning. It was the, it was the beginning of a time construct, folks. The spirit of this is self-existing. He's eternal. There is no beginning. There is no end. So, what we're talking about here is in the beginning of the fall, okay? After the fall, this is the beginning after the fall. In the beginning, God created. The heaven and earth. And here it is. In darkness, was upon the face of the deep, the face, the deep, okay, it's right there, right in plain sight, in the beginning is time, God created the heavens, which is space, and the earth, which is matter. Okay? Here's the trickery of it all, though. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. This God here created nothing. Okay? Everything that's being created right now in this part of the creation story from Genesis 1, 1 to Genesis Two, three is a fabrication. It is not real. We live in a, a West world. We live in a fantasy, folks. None of what you, what we experience in this body is real. Remember in the Matrix how they hook up? They can be killed in this realm. But there's some, our, our bodies are driven from the spirit outside this realm. You understand that? Something spiritual hijacks our bodies. Our bodies are just uh, magnetic fields. They're uh, Torah fields. This is why the word Torah exists 
because the Torah equals the torso. Right? And the torso equals a field. An energy field. Our bodies are energy fields. You understand? Your soul is that image. An image is all equals a soul without the spirit. Okay? So those people that say I was created in an image of God are freaking devils. Because that man that was created in an image, remember I said earlier, is a phantom. A phantom is a ghost. The ghost is the spirit of the dead. And the ghost's definitions are a devil, a demon, and a phantom. That man that was created on the sixth day of creation was created in a in a uh, a phantom. Give me one second here. Genesis one twenty seven Bible Hub. Okay, it's 6754 is the number in the Strong's Concordance, all right? And uh, balsamo is the phonetic spelling for it, from an unused root meaning to shade a phantom, okay? Image means to shade a phantom. Okay? It's an illusion, as I said. It's a resemblance. Hence, a representative, figuratively. Okay? A representative figure, especially an idol. So, this man that was created on the sixth day of creation... is an idol. All right? You got to stop thinking fleshly, man. This is what Satan wants you to do. This is why he distracts your... Uh, he distracts all of us with everything that's going around. He, he, folks, you got to understand that these people that were created on the sixth day are demonites, man. Okay? They are evil pieces of shit. Well, who are they? It's the government. Okay? Go to your toolbar or your YouTube. Open up another YouTube video and say the nine most terrifying words you could ever hear from the government. It's Ronald Reagan telling you we're from the government and we're here to help. If you hear those words coming from anybody that's of the government and we're here to help, run. Kick them the fuck off your property, man. Tell them to take a fucking hike. Tell them you don't need them. Because the government's what? Government's all rest on Jesus' shoulder. Why are the governments all resting on Jesus' shoulders? Okay? Why in this parable does it say to us a child is born? And then it says again, unto us a son is given. It wasn't enough to say that unto us is a child is born. They gotta add to they gotta add to it and say now a son is given, right? And what does it say? And the governments shall be upon his shoulders.
Okay? The governments are all resting on Jesus Christ's shoulders. The governments are all that is evil. In case you didn't know that uh, um, the war on drugs that took place back in the 80s with George Bush's administration, uh, George Bush Jr.'s administration, why do you think they call him Poppy? How do you think he got the name Poppy? Because he went over there to freaking Iraq to all their freaking poppy fields. He went over there for their heroin. This is why it was the war on drugs, because we were going over to another country and we were taking all their heroin in their poppy fields. And what do you think we did with it? We brought it back here. How did we get it here? We get it here on our, our naval vessels, on our aircraft carriers, and on our uh, destroyers and frigates, and corrupted captains, and people that have their hand into bringing drugs to America and putting the stuff on the streets. It's all put on the streets from our governments. And everybody has a little, their hand in the pie. You got to understand, Satan ain't employing people that are loving their brothers, man, and saying, you know, hey, trying to talk people down. Hey, what's going on here? Satan wants people to beat the shit out of people and throw their, cart their asses off to jail. So the governments are all resting on Jesus Christ's shoulders. Okay? And in 1619 of Isaiah, it says, O Lord, O Lord, you are my strength. Refuge and fortress. The Gentile, woo -wee. Gentile shall come from from all ends of the earth why are they coming from all ends of the earth and profess we have inherited nothing But lies, vanities, and things that will profit us nothing. So this is a deep parable that can lead you to many different aspects in the Bible, many different areas in the Bible, and I'm going to cover a few of them too. Isaiah 16, 19 says, Oh Lord, you are my strength, refuge, and fortress. And I'm pretty sure it says like fortress, strength, and refuge. But I like saying it in that order. And I'm used to saying it in that order. So the three words are correct, but they're not in the right order. And I purposely do it that way because I think it flows better the way I say it. Strength, refuge, and fortress. The Gentile, what's a Gentile? A Gen is a a Gentile is a Gen tiled in flesh. A Gen equals mankind created on the sixth day. That's what a jinn is. That's what a Gentile is. A Gentile is a jinn tiled in flesh. All right? And the Gentile, why are they coming from all ends of the earth? 
Huh? Because when they were created in Genesis 1.25, that's where they were created. When God created the beast of the field, each according to their kind, we've been lied to. Everything was here, folks. That's what it means to be born into a world of sin. All the bars and the carnalness and the, the sex and the reveling and the partying and the drinking and the effeminate sex and the lying and the cheating and the stealing and the... Uh, the adultery and the idol worship and everything, the whoremongering, the prostitution, the killing. The... Folks, this place was created a place of sin. That's what it means to be born into a world of sin. And for our birth into this world, that is the first death. Do you understand? The second death is going to be the one that burns with brimstone. That's the second death, folks. Okay, if you're not wearing the full armor of God, the Spirit, the self-existing eternal Lord, one creator, no name, let him tell you his name. You know, I've heard from different Hebrews that just to even pronounce God's name could take you 10,000 years. <laughs> so, so for him to pronounce your name and for you to be able to remember his name, that's a gift that the Spirit gives to you. And his name might be 50,000 words connected to one another for all we know. It would take you months just to pronounce his, his name in this reality construct. You know? So the second one, the second death is when we exhale our breath and our spirit ascends for judgment which tells us in John 12 31 now judgment is upon the world hold on I don't understand that and the prince the prince of this world will be cast out. Okay, this is John. Okay, now judgment is upon the world and the prince of this world will be cast out. Well, who's the prince of this world? Well, we've all been taught that it's Satan. But I thought... Jesus is the God of this world. Isn't he the one that everybody's worshiping on this plane of existence? So if Jesus is the one that's being worshipped on this existence, and Jesus uh, also in 9, 6, and I didn't, I didn't write down all the things in Isaiah that it said about Jesus, I didn't say that he would be called Wonderful Counselor. Uh, Mighty God. Everlasting Father. And Prince of Peace. Wake up, folks. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And the Prince of this world will be cast out. That's it. There's a lot of parables that say that Jesus is the Prince. Okay? Uh, and it, there's parables that say that uh, I am coming. I am coming. And my reward is with me to give each one according to what he has done. Jesus is coming to give each one according to what he has done. And it goes on to say that I am the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Folks, Look, 
The problem with Christians is they're rewriting definitions. Okay? Okay, one means one. Okay? One equals one. Means none beside. It means without partners. It means by one's self. Okay, that's the definition of one. Okay, one doesn't mean three. It doesn't equal trinity. You Christians got to stop writing, rewriting definitions. And I'll tell you why you're brainwashed in all this. Let me show you. There's a saying that says, why would anybody on the face of this earth tell us that ignorance is bliss? When the very word ignorance means without knowledge? It means an unlearned skill set. It means uh, blind to the truth. So this is how you're indoctrinated right here. You don't even know it. You're... You are mentally indoctrinated with little sayings like this, ignorance is bliss. Because clearly ignorance is uh, uh, opposite of bliss, which is full of joy. Joy is uh, overwhelming feelings. Of contentment. Bliss. Completely opposite. So Satan wants you to believe. Satan wants you to believe that ignorance is bliss. Satan doesn't want you to understand this reality construct that I'm trying to teach you. And Satan doesn't want me... Pointing out, and Satan doesn't want you listening to the fact that I pointed out what 666 means. All right? Ignorance isn't bliss. You have a responsibility to the Creator, the Spirit of God, to worship Him and call out to Him for the truth. Okay? Okay, John 4.24, the creator is spirit, folks. It is not natural. There's a difference. Okay, the natural world is a superstitious world. Okay, it is a supernatural world world uh, with a bunch of musicians okay so 
the, the creator is spirit and those that worship the spirit must do so in spirit and truth. And this is the key to it all. This is what you're looking for. This is what you're praying for. You're praying to the Lord. The self-existing eternal one. To put the truth on you. Okay. Now. Also, I talked a little bit about Corona. Anytime that you talk about this stuff, you take a chance of getting a strike. Okay, folks, I've had dozens of strikes now. I've had multiple channels shut down. My philosophy is if you're not getting your channel shut down, then you ain't sharing the truth. <laughs> At least... Well, I can't say that. There are a few people that are sharing the truth, but uh, you're not cutting them deep enough. See, I cut these people so deep, they can't deal with it. Now, um, let's talk a little bit about okay, what is this? It, it equals COVID alone stands for Certificate of Vaccination Identification. Huh. Anybody know that? You ever heard that before? How about this? If you take the letter C and you bring it with the letter number three and then you take COVID equals sheep in Latin. Okay. Three equals Abaddon. And its usage is angel from the abyss. All right, sheep, and then you got 19, right? COVID-19, right? What's the 19? That's in the Strong's Concordance. Okay, so COVID-19 means angel from the abyss, sheep slaughtered. Huh? You ever heard that shit before? Man, I put anything together for you. What's the number 19 in uh, tarot cards? It means the sun. You flip the card, that's what the number 19 means in tarot card readings. It means the sun. To me, that equals sun worship. All right. Could there be any other meanings to uh, 19? What if it's like a 1 plus 9? What if uh, uh, the 1 represented A and the 9 represented I which represented artificial intelligence
Just throwing ideas out there for you to think about. So the one plus nine maybe could mean A in our alphabet and nine in our alphabet, which would mean artificial intelligence, which would connect us to that microchip. Because what are they saying about the microchip? They're saying that humanity has to level up now, man. That, that they're wanting to put chips inside of our heads where we can connect and have information right there available. Right to you on the spot. You know, scan this, scan that. So what is that? That is the microchip. That I mentioned earlier. With the patent number... W O twenty twenty zero six zero six zero six. I don't know, man. That looks uh pretty. Uh, you know, what if what if this one in this nine was in the tarot card readings, and it was uh, one means. The magician, okay, and nine equals the hermit. Come on, this, come on, really? Everything that I'm thinking here could possibly have all these different definitions, all this meaning. So who is the magician? Huh? It's that man that was created on the sixth day of creation. He's a magic man. He's an illusion. He's a trick that's been pulled over your eyes by the Lord, the Creator. We live in a West world. Okay? And this is why they think of us as hermits, because the hermits are the population. That's right. Come on, man. I, I, this is some crazy, psyche stuff, man. Okay? Huh, could there be any other meanings to it? There was a word that I meant, that I forgot to mention earlier. That one. N-O-V-E-L. Novel. Okay, I can't say anything more than that. Or I risk another strike why would I get a strike from just mentioning mentioning this simple word well google the the uh the definition for this word novel go see what it says all right and then look at the very first word that it's telling you what novel is okay I can't say anything more than that figure it out yourself okay I don't want to lose another video that I take, you know, I'm an hour and 13 minutes into this right now. I don't want to lose another video to it all. It takes time. Okay. What else can I add here? COVID. Trying to teach everybody on this plane of existence, they do everything backwards. So, COVID in Hebrew means Devok. Devok equals Daibu. Daibu are evil spirits. Okay. Devok and Daibuk being evil spirits capable of moving through humans. 
tenemos in mankind. That should be a flag for you right there. If you look up the definition of Devok and Daibut, it's going to tell you that a Devok is an evil spirit which is capable, a jinn. A Devok and Daibuk book are jinn. Okay? Jinn are good and evil spirits. Thy books are just plain fucking evil spirits, man. And anything good about them, they are straight, sheer fucking... These are the ones that kidnap children from their homes, lock them up in chambers, tie them to walls, they prod them, they electrocute them, they burn them, they rape them over and over and over, and then they set them out on the streets. They rape them, for, they, they kidnap them from one country and they fly them to another country and they get them all jacked up on the drugs and stuff. These are evil spirits. Okay? Which are... The governments equals all governments. There's none that are exempt, folks. Okay, so I mentioned earlier that jinn are jinn tiled in flesh. Now, It says in Romans 2.12, when the Gentiles sin, they will be destroyed. Even though They never had God's written law. What does that mean? It means that when the Spirit of God created those beasts, Gentile beast, and 125 of Genesis, He created them the lawless ones. You understand, this is why they're a law unto themselves. They have no laws. You got to understand that that man that was created in Genesis chapter 2, okay, verse 7 was made from the dust. Okay, you got to understand, you got a lot of creations going on. You have the United, the Gentile United Nations that were created in Genesis as the lawless ones. And then you had another man who was created in Genesis 1, 26 and 27. And then you had another man. This is the first man, Adam. And then the second one, this is the second man, Adam. Okay? One was created in an image. The other was created from the dust. Clearly, there are two different types of creations here. Okay? This one is created in an image as a ghost. And this one that was formed from the dust is spiritual. Spiritually living. This one's the dead. Yes, God created dead. It's really, it's not that hard to understand now. 
that he created nations of people that were dead. The Gentiles sinned, even though they never had God's written law, right? And this is important for you Hebrews, right? And the Jews, it says in the Bible, here, I don't want to use these grease pens any much because they're so freaking hard to clean off compared to the other one. Okay? You'll see. And the... Uh, Hebrew that do have the law will be judged by that law. Um, what's the law? What's the law, folks? The law is the Torah. Okay? The five books of Moses. All right? So, man, when the Gentiles sin, they will be destroyed, even though they never had God's written law. And the Hebrew that do have the law will be judged by that law. Oh. When they fail to obey it. Obey it. Okay? Now everything that we've been taught, we've been taught that, that Jesus came to... Uh, you got one Jesus here that's saying that he came to... Uh, you got, in order to get to the creator, you have to get, go through him. And then you got one that says, um, fear the Lord and fear him alone. Okay. Earlier I told you that L was 410 in the Strong's Concordance. Elohim is 430 in the Strong's Concordance. Lowercase gods, 430 in the Strong's Concordance. God is Elohim in the Strong's Concordance. Elohim means many gods. Again, gods is Elohim here. Gods, many gods in one. They're telling you in Star Trek, in that movie Star Trek, when Captain Kirk and uh, Spock were having their gay moment and he was dying in that chamber. And uh, he was saying, uh, you know, what was it? The death of a few outweighed the death of the many. Or the death of the many out... Yeah, the death of a few outweigh the many. Or something like that. Okay. You got to understand. Mankind created on the sixth day, folks, thinks of themselves as God. They put it right on the dollar bill. For in God we trust. In God we trust. Who is that? That is... Mankind. You are trusting in mankind. So every time you vote a politician in the office, what do you do? You give up your power, man. The Spirit of God wants you to worship Him and He'll provide for you everything you need. You don't need worldly things. He'll provide for you 
spiritual things. He'll feed you spiritual food. He'll bring you closer to truth, man. The truth is what where the wealth is at, folks. Not out there, man. That world out there is nothing but lies, rapists, murderers, whoremongers, uh, political stars, generals that are fudge packing their privates and stuff, priests that are banging kids inside of their congregations, parents that take money from the priests to keep quiet. It's all a sham, man. All of it. Vote a politician in the office. Lose your power. That's a fact. Okay? Not only do you lose your power, you become an agent for the system. When you vote a politician in the office, you come... <laughs> What would you like me to do? Yeah, man. You have no power. You're allowing demons on you because power corrupts absolutely. If power corrupts absolutely and you got mankind in office, what do you think they're doing? Why do you think that we're $24 trillion in debt? That's a mighty large number. Do you know in my time when I was in 72, 1972, United States deficit was $500 million, folks. Okay. Five hundred million dollars. Not even billions, folks. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Fifty years ago, the American debt was five hundred million dollars. Now you're at twenty-four trillion dollars in fifty years, folks. When does it stop? How do they keep creating debt? This means that when you're born into this plane of existence, you're born into this plane of existence. $75,000 into debt. When you uh, go to the hospital and you get your child a birth certificate, you are literally giving your child over to the state. You don't know that, but you are. You're creating debt for your child when you get them a birth certificate, when you get them the Social Security card, when you file all that paperwork, you have just fucked your child into putting them inside of the system and making them a slave to the system. That's what it means when you certify the birth of your child. Shit, I wouldn't even let the state know anymore when you have kids, man. Hide your kids. You don't have to get married anymore, folks. Do you know that the minute you lay down with the person, lay down, you're married. You lay down and you put your seed in a woman you and that woman have consummated a marriage to the Spirit of God. And then if you and that woman go your separate ways, both of you are in an adulterous relationship the rest of your life. This is why you must repent to the Creator, man. This nation, everybody in it, is committing adultery. Damn near, I mean, there might be 1% of 1% of people that walk that straight line, they don't cheat, they don't do anything. But if uh, you don't wake up to what's going on, these people are your enemies, folks. You can't put it in God we trust. I'm trying to teach you that God on this plane of existence is the devil. On this realm here, God on this realm here, Elohim, is the devil. God created mankind. He created us devils. He created us demons. He created a host system, the Lord of hosts. This is the host right here. Your flesh is the host. You have a soul inside of your host with the spirit who has his hand on you, protecting you, or you have no spirit on you. Let me tell you how you have no spirit on you. When you worship Yeshua or Yahweh or 
Yahweh Shai or Jesus or Melchizedek the Melchizedek order or Gilgamesh or Apollyon any of these names, man, that you're placing next to the Spirit of God, Yah, Yahweh, why would you, why would you want to take a chance and call the Creator? Look, if I tell you, hey man, my name's John, how you doing? I introduce myself, and then you say, hi Dick, do you think that would be an insult to me? No, dude, I didn't say my name was Dick. My name is John. Oh, well, fucking pleased to meet you, Richard. That's an insult, right? So if the Spirit, the Creator, says, I'm the Lord. Okay? That's all he says. I'm the Lord. That's it. That's my name. Now, I did read about 20 different versions <coughs> of Isaiah 42.8 this morning. I was looking for something particular. I am the Lord. That is my name. My glory I will not yield to another. The self-existing eternal Lord is telling you, I am the Lord and that is my name. Okay? Now there are Bibles that say, I am the Lord. Jehovah is my name. Uh, Yahweh is my name. Yahweh is my name. Well, the problem with this, folks, is you got three different names for God. You know, the Hebrews are doing the exact same thing that the white man's doing. You've just given God a bunch of different names in Hebrew, and the Spirit, the Lord, the self-existing eternal one, is telling you straight out that you are not numbers 2313, pay close attention to everything I say. You are not to invoke the names of other gods. Once you start understanding, folks, that mankind is considering themselves gods, they want you to worship their Zeus. They want you to worship their Apollo. They want you to worship their deity gods. They want you to worship the Triton. They want you to worship Apollo and Zeus and every freaking buddy else, man. Any name underneath of this plane of existence, just worship anything you want other than the spirit. Well, you got to understand, you people are worshiping mankind. Mankind was created on the sixth day of creation, and they want you to worship them. Their creation of the creator, and they want to take glory of the creator like they created this shit. Are you freaking kidding me? Do you really believe that a man who died on a cross in a pamper uh, created everything you see out there? No, not true. It's so, uh, 810 of Romans say, says, If the body 
of Christ be in you, your body is dead because of sin. If the body of Christ be in you, then your body is dead because of sin. That doesn't sound too uh, thrilling to me. I don't want my body to be dead because of sin. It also goes on to say, but your body is alive in righteousness. I don't see, but your body and spirit is alive in righteousness. You, your body and spirit can't be alive in righteousness if your body is in sin and walking contrary to the spirit of God. Let me ask you something. Jesus said, died for our sins. And the question I got for Christians is if Jesus died for our sins, he took all the sins of the world upon his shoulders and carried them down to hell for him, then why is there sin still in this world? I'll tell you why. Because when he was ascending, as you guys say, he must have left that fucking door open, man, because uh, sin's still in this fucking world. And it's and it's at a, a nasty, it's so vile that the Spirit of God is getting ready to cause destruction on you guys. He's not playing for you. So if the body of Christ be in you, then your body is dead because of sin. Well, how is that? That's Romans 8.10. <clears throat> We have to go to John 6.56. It says, For my flesh, Jesus says, For my flesh is good food. Mm -mm -mm. Jesus' flesh. Here, take a chunk of it. Go ahead and take it. Yeah, my flesh is good food. Go ahead and take a bite of it. My flesh is good food. My blood, <laughs> good drink, wow, good drink, that sounds just absolutely wonderful, good drink, those that eat my flesh shall burn and rot in hell, remain in me. Oh, hold on. Those that eat my flesh and drink my blood. Oh, wonderful. Remain in me. And I in him. Wonderful. So all you got to do is eat the flesh of Jesus Christ and drink his freaking blood that he tells you is good food and tells you is good drink. And that's how Jesus remains in you. So when you go to church and you break bread and you eat that bread as a meta metaphorical piece of flesh and you drink the wine as metaphorical drink of wine, then you're taking on the body of Christ. I am guilty of breaking bread in communion, and I have repented and rebuked for all that shit, man, as you should repent and rebuke for it as well. <clears throat> well, folks, that looks like it's a pretty decent lesson to me, man. As always, you know, what does Jesus say? He says, I didn't come to abolish the law, folks. He says that I came to... Uh, Continue the law. I did not come to abolish the law or the prophets. I don't think that I've come to abolish them. I've come to fulfill them. 517 of Matthew. Okay. It also says, Lord, Lord. What is it? 722? Lord. Lord. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Did we not prophesy in your name? Your name, Jesus, 
name and cast out demons. And, De and Jesus will say, surely that day, he will say, away from me. You workers of lawlessness. Away from me, Jesus is going to say, you workers of lawlessness. Who are the workers of lawlessness? Again, that's Romans 2.12. When the Gentiles sin, they will be destroyed even though they never had God's written law. The lawless ones. You never had God's written law. That's why. That's about it, folks. I was looking forward to putting this one up. Let's see if I get a strike or not. I don't know. I tried to steer clear and not make any things other than go check out the word novel and see what it says. Right? And then Google what is what is this and this together. What is this? And then read it. What it says. And then go and look in dictionary.com and see what this says. Novel. What it says. Okay? And then you'll start seeing that everything that's produced in this plane of existence is a system folks it's a system I like this board now man I was hating doing it before but this is pretty good I hope you enjoyed it man bow your heads let's go out if you'd like our father our creator the spirit scratch the father our creator the spirit which moves all things in place I humbly lay my life before you and call on you to put your spirit upon me Place your spirit upon those that may be listening to this message. Let those that cry out for the truth, Lord, expose that truth to them as you have exposed the truth to me. I humbly submit my life before you that I am a sinner with great iniquity on my back that stacks to the sky. Please cover my sins and dress me in beautiful spiritual garments so that I may not go about naked and unclothed on the day of judgment. I submit to you every ounce of blood that pumps through my veins and every cell and fiber that comprises me of flesh. There is none like you. I love you with all of my mind, heart, and soul, my strength and might. I call on you and you alone and place nothing beside you. You are my master. And I serve you, my Lord, the creator of all things, heaven and earth, seen and unseen, the almighty, a spirit. Much love. Shalom. This is White Raptor News Ministries.